Welcome to Planet Microcap. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and joining me today is Dr. Stephen Quay. He is the chairman, CEO, and president of Atosa Therapeutics. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is ATOS on NASDAQ. And Atosa will be presenting at our upcoming investor conference, the Planet Microcap Showcase, taking place in Las Vegas, April 30 through May 2nd, 2024, at the Paris Hotel and Casino. For more information to meet with Dr. Quay to see the Atosa presentation, please visit planetmicrocapshowcase.com. And with that, Dr. Quay, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to be here, Robert. Absolutely. It's great to have you. I mean, it, look, it's been, it's been a few years. I mean, it used to be a few years, but we've we've made some significant progress. And this is the year uh, to be talking about Atosa. Absolutely. Well, let's get into it. You know, for those that may not have seen any of our previous interviews from yesteryear, um, can you give our audience a quick overview and history of the company? Sure. So uh, look at, you know, I'm, I'm in ph physician scientist and MD, PhD. I, I taught at Stanford when I invented the gadolinium that's used in MRI imaging and about 80 million people have taken that drug. And now this is company number seven. <clears throat> I have seven FDA approved drugs, but this is gonna be my most significant contribution here. I started Atosa Therapeutics uh, over a decade ago with a simple idea. Why isn't there a pap smear for breast cancer? The pap smear took cervical cancer from about 115,000 a year down to 10,000 uh, because it allowed you to see the changes before you get cancer. Uh, and I want to do the same thing uh, with uh, with breast cancer because it's it's obviously a a bigger uh, a bigger health burden, uh, and we're doing it. We're there. So what we have is women who are at high risk of getting future cancer because they have uh, a, a dense mammogram, so a very white mammogram, uh, and we're in a trial in, in Sweden to see if we can lower the density and therefore help prevent the cancer in the future. So. Um, we started out with this mission. Can you know? Can we can we do something to see the women at high risk of breast cancer? And this year we're going to have clinical readouts in that space as well as several other programs. Absolutely. And you know, before I get into you know what is unique and different, and you can probably answer that even within this my first part of this question is what phase is this trial uh, that you're doing in Sweden? Phase one, phase two. You know, where are we at? This is a phase two trial. Okay. Um, so with the results of this data in the second half of this year, we'll be designing uh, the final trial for, for FDA approval. Um, and that's always kind of the inflection points for companies like ours, where you, you, you know, you sort of go along and you try to generate some safety data in phase one and then some efficacy data in phase two. But with that result and with an agreement from the FDA of what phase three looks like, uh, you're really ready to rock and roll. Absolutely. And is it phase two A or phase two B? Oh, it, it's it would be technically phase two B. Ah, okay. In the in the nomenclature, I wasn't sure how savvy uh, everyone is on. on no, this. no, no. Look, I only I only ask because I've done a couple of biotech interviews in the last like six to nine months right now, and you know one of the things that we talked about was you know how important it is to make sure that you know it all comes down to the phase two B. Right. So that that's why I wanted to make sure that I was clarified. So, you know, speaking of um, of, you know, your technology and the therapeutics and everything that you're looking to accomplish, what would you say is the main thing that differentiates what you're trying to accomplish now with the TOSA therapeutics versus maybe some of your peers or standard of care that's out there? Yeah. So, I mean, it all comes down to the science and in this case to the molecule. Um, it has this, you know, scientific name Z uh, for Zeta endoxifen. Um, so it's a, a, a particular small molecule that has some quite unique properties. Breast cancer is, a, you know, 80% of breast cancer is driven by estrogen. So the estrogen comes to the cancer cell, it binds to the estrogen receptor that goes into the nucleus, turns on the genes that cause the cell to grow. <clears throat> so one of the things that Z endoxifen does, first and foremost, is it sits on the receptor and blocks estrogen from coming on. So that's its major function, and it's the best of all the drugs in this class at doing that. And it has additional properties where it changes the shape of the estrogen receptor, and there's systems in, the, in, in your cells that say, hey, that protein looks misshapen. I'm going to de degrade it. So it not only blocks the estrogen receptor, so estrogen can't get on the receptor, but it actually causes the receptor to be degraded and to go away. Uh, which is even a more powerful effect. And then the coup de grace is that it works on something called protein kinase C. One of the challenges for hormone treatment of breast cancers, these, you know, endoxifen and tamoxifen and other drugs like that is 
They stop the cell from growing when the drug is around, but when you take the drug away, the cells can proliferate. And doxifen's activity with PKC beta actually causes the cell to say to commit suicide, to do what's called programmed cell death, which has the fancy word apoptosis. So it's a trifecta of effects on breast cancer that is not shared with any other drug. Very good. And, you know, Dr. Prey, you alluded to this, my next question a bit in, in your opening, but, you know, but give us a little bit more about your background. You mentioned you had seven drugs that you've gotten through FDA approval. You know, maybe you go through a couple of them that maybe some people might know as well. Sure. Well, yeah. So I uh, grew up in Michigan and went to University of Michigan for an MD and a PhD. Uh, then went to MIT as a postdoc in the chemistry department with a Nobel laureate. Uh, so that was my night job. And then during the day, I was over at the Mass General treating patients uh, in my residency there, my medical residency. Spent about four years in Boston doing those two activities and then went to Stanford and taught on the, in the medical school for about a decade. Um, and when I think of my of my skill set, it is, it is certainly in medicine, but it's also in chemistry. Uh, I have 90 patents uh, in the area of, of chemical uh, products. And so <clears throat> my inventions include the gadolinium that's used in MRI imaging, uh, there was uh, another uh, MRI agent, uh, some ultrasound contrast agents that allow you to look at the heart and its function, uh, and some nasal nasal sprays for uh, osteoporosis uh, and for pernicious anemia. Um, so I kind of, uh, I like to invent molecules that I think can have activities. Um, I will take credit for the zeandoxin being such a potent inhibitor of the estrogen receptor, but its activity on PKC beta uh, was quite surprising. Um, and we don't fully understand it, but we certainly are going to take advantage of it. Um, so I think, as I said, about 80 million people have, have taken the drugs that I've, that I've been involved with. But being able to perhaps prevent breast cancer or treat it earlier uh, <clears throat> with more potent, potent uh, drugs uh, will really be a, 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 an accomplishment. So with that, you know, my final question for you here today, and this is from what you can tell us, of course, you know, what would you say are some of the company's goals for 2024? You mentioned how, you know, obviously clinical readouts and whatnot, but maybe if there's some additional color there. Well, sure. So we, so to, to be absolutely clear, we have four ongoing clinical trials, all with some form of a readout in the second half of this year. Uh, two are in prevention and two are in what's called the neoadjuvant space, which is that time between diagnosis and definitive surgery. Um, the two preventions are the one we've spoken of. It's called the Charisma Trial in Stockholm, Sweden, looking at breast density and trying to reduce that density uh, with six months of drug. And that'll have a readout again in the second half next year. The other prevention trial is in women who've actually had a biopsy. And the good news is they don't have cancer. The bad news is they have a precancer called BCIS. Um, and so we're trying, this is at uh, UCSF with uh, Dr. Laura Esserman a very prominent breast uh, surgeon. We're trying to look at it, seeing if we can prevent that evolution from DCIS to, to invasive cancer. So those are the two prevention trials, uh, again, with readouts in the second half this year. And then in this neoadjuvant space where they get about six months of drug, we have a trial at the Mayo Clinic in only premenopausal women, looking at the ability to use endoxifen to downstage their, their tumors to make them smaller, uh, or to make them go away, um, and to avoid something called ovarian function suppression. So it's a technical issue, but in premenopausal women who have intact ovaries, when you give them a drug that blocks estrogen, the ovaries say, hey, there's no estrogen, and they up, they up uh, the production of estrogen, and you have to suppress it. And ovarian suppression has some very bad side effects associated with them to the point where women will, will risk getting cancer to stop taking those drugs. We think our, our hypothesis is that endoxin is so powerful, it, it doesn't need that ovarian function suppression. We just reported at the AACR meeting in San Diego the results of our uh, PK run-in cohort. That's exactly what we saw. Uh, all of the women had a very significant reduction in their KI67 or cell proliferation. And when we measured the tumors from baseline to six months when they had their surgery, all of the tumors got, got smaller. Um, so there was... Some of, the, some of the patients had a complete uh, imaging response, which is sort of unheard of in the neoadjuvant space for HR cancers. Um, some of them had a uh, reduction in size and some of them had simply stable disease, but all of them had the tumors getting smaller by MRI. Uh, and then the other trial is in the same setting, ER-positive breast cancer, uh, but with both 
pre and postmenopausal women um, again in this new adjuvant space, and that's being done at UCSF. So we've got you know San Francisco Mayo Clinic and and uh, Karolinski Institute, where the Nobel Prize is given, as our primary uh, clinical centers with data readout this fall. Now all of these are in monotherapy with uh, with endoxifen. But we all know that breast cancer is typically a multi-drug format. So some of the other really exciting things that you're going to hear from the company this year is beginning to combine endoxifen with other drugs where we hope to see synergy, where, where one and one plus one is not two, but it's three or four or five. Um, so uh, our clinical programs, because we've, we've expanded laterally from you know, going from prevention to treatment in monotherapy with breast cancer. But now you'll see us, you know, sort of playing two-dimensional chess and maybe even some three-dimensional activities this year, um, all coming between now and, and the end of this year. So Dr. Quay, with that, where can our audience go and find more information to follow along the Atosa therapeutic story? Well, great. It's our it's our website. It's www.atosatherapeutics.com. Uh, you can go there. Uh, I have a website of, of some of my own activity. It's drquay.com. You can you can find out some of the, the things that I do uh, in, in, in medicine. Very good. Well, Dr. Quay, thank you so much for joining me today. Really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And we'll see you in Vegas. You will. Take care, Robert. Thank you.